This is a look at the GPS unit close up. It's a very sleek and smart unit, well built. In fact, it's more akin to a smartphone in build rather than a GPS unit. It's certainly very slim, very unlike my current Garmin unit. To the side is a mini USB charging port and for power. There's a micro SD card slot for storing music and other files. A headphone socket for listening to music. The power on button is on the top. There's a speaker on the back and it's provided with a series of accessories. Obviously the car windscreen mount with a good suction clip. So press that in and the sat nav fits to the front here. There's a power and charging cable of course with a mini USB on the end and this as well. This is quite a nifty design because the sat nav clips into this and then it can be used on a desk like so with the sat nav on it but it also includes this stylus which is a very tidy arrangement and the stylus extends as well. Then for storage just pop it back in and this unit clips onto the windscreen mount. Just snaps into place like so and then is easily removed as well for when the sat nav is used on a desk. I've now connected the GPS to a power bank so we can take a look at it and some of the options that it offers. So it's now powering up and you can see here it offers far more than most sat navs with navigation, music player, video player, photo viewer, ebook reader, games, options for favourites, calculator, unit converter, FM radio, volume controls, backlight, calibration, date and time and here on the desk menu you can actually access a Windows operating system which is quite useful particularly if you're working away from home and just have a small file that you need to read. There's also the music player options if you've got music stored on the micro SD card you can play it through the GPS and the sound comes out of the speaker obviously. But the main purpose of using a sat nav of course is to find your way around so put it back into navigation mode you can see here that it's now labeled as an i go my way primo sat nav to find a route simply press on the find button and then enter the place you want to go to by the find address button um, it's currently set to birmingham but i'll change that to say brecon and it wants you to enter a street name. I don't know any streets in Brecon so I'll click on the results and just choose somewhere. A40 Senny Bridge sounds good to me. It does request a house number. Again I don't know any houses so we'll go for number six which has been suggested and click done. You do need quite a firm press on this. I'm too used to a smartphone and hey presto there it is. That's Brecon there. So I'll pop it in the car and see how it works. The sat nav is now installed in my van and you can see from the display that in 7.3 miles I come to a roundabout and bear left. After that in 8.1 miles I turn right. I'm currently on the A44. It's 11.44 on the 29th of November and further information shows that I'm not moving at the moment but that I'm in a 40 mile an hour speed limit road. The battery is 93% charged, I'm at an elevation of 1230 feet, picked up 10 satellites and I've got 20 miles to go. So it's very informative and as I was driving along a few moments ago and slightly went over the speed limit, there was a very polite warning that you are now over the speed limit, a voice prompt. So that was quite good, I wasn't expecting that, certainly not at this price point anyway. 
and just for comparison purposes this is my usual Garmin sat nav. You can see that both have very similar displays, they give the same information. The difference is this one has traffic updates but it also costs four or five times the amount of this one. So if you don't need traffic updates then there's really no reason for spending so much extra on that if I'm honest. Once you've selected your route you can then get more information by pressing on the more button at the bottom of the screen so you can see local areas, add it to your favourites, show the cursor position within a map and this can add places to visit and detours along the way. The I button shows the grid references and you can zoom in and out of maps. So very very good graphics indeed and quite impressive. Indications of speed cameras and speed limits and the direction of travel as well throughout the route. So loads and loads of information on this which isn't necessarily first apparent when you first use it. The more you use it, the more you discover its features. After 400 feet, enter the roundabout and take the second exit. Take second exit to A44. Not sure quite where all these turnings are because I'm now in a car park so it is actually just slightly out at this point but it's pretty obvious and in the case of the Garmin it's completely off there anyway. So can't really criticise that. So actually I'm not there facing the river, I'm actually there facing the road and in the car park parked about there actually just opposite the visitor centre which is that blob there. So that's where I am not there. But I can't really criticise that. These are the nighttime colours on the GPS. Nice clear bright maps that stand out in the dark and there are no reflections. Again very good graphics, very nice and clear and probably better than the Garmin once again. Having now used this GPS over several days and several hundred miles, I have to conclude that it has surprised me greatly. It's very reliable. Admittedly, very occasionally it's tried to send me down obviously narrow tracks which are not really roads, but that's quite common to all sat-navs anyway. But other than that, it's proven extremely reliable. It has lots of features, amongst the best graphics I've ever seen indicate points of interest, lots of additional information about an area once you're in it, the option to search for local facilities, it can use grid references as well and it has so many other features as well including the radio, photo viewer, music player and so on. And the fact it has the overseas European maps as well is an absolute bonus. I can't imagine any of the top brands, in inverted commas, providing such a range of facilities and features and maps for anything like this price. So this offers extremely good value for money and I can recommend it with complete confidence.